This is why I train in martial arts. So on Friday, September the 7th, 2020, at night, Utah police shot a 13-year-old white boy who had autism as he was running away from them. These are supposed to be cops who are CIT trained specially trained to handle people with autism or any type of mental health or mental illness episode. So they're supposed to be trained to handle someone like this. And what do they do? They shoot him in the back while he's running. Okay. While he's running. Now in terms of this is why I train in martial arts. I by myself have handled at least one grown man doing a mental health episode. I know I did a video on this channel. It got I had to take it down though. It's made I still be up. I think I had to put it back up without the Street Fighter um without the Street Fighter wood thing that I should have been able to fair use where it was five of us and one girl that knew karate. And I had to take her down because I was the only one that was still standing after she was kicking everyone else. She tried to kick at me and I blocked it. So, um, I know that you can take a 13 year old boy with autism down. As a matter of fact, I have trained, I have trained people with autism. I know that yes, they can learn martial arts. So if you want to make the argument, well, what if he knew martial arts and the cops came after him? It is harder for them to learn it. They can learn it, though, because I got an autistic guy at a brown belt. The only reason why he didn't get the black belt is because he got a job. But he can, I'm confident he can protect himself against bullies, which, which is all I want. So let's take a look at this and take a look at some footage from his mom. Five minutes. How could it have escalated in less than five minutes? He was running away. He was running away. Barton says her 13-year-old son, Lyndon, was running from police because he was scared. He didn't want to be taken to the hospital. Lyndon has autism and Asperger's and was extremely upset. Barton called the police and asked for a crisis intervention team that knows how to deal with people with mental health issues, okay? She called for a crisis intervention team that knows how to deal with people with mental health issues. As I know I've said in other videos, they need to put teams like that together. Apparently, those teams do not need to be fully associated with the police. And those teams need to be stacked full of unarmed martial artists with backgrounds in judo and or jujitsu. And also a striking art too. In fact, you could just develop a system that is strictly for people who deal with mental health issues that's pretty much classically jiu-jitsu based or like what I do taekwondo with influences from judo so you call them and they're supposed to come out and be able to de-escalate a situation um, using the most minimal force possible telling officers her son needed to be taken to the hospital for treatment I said look He's, he's unarmed, he doesn't have anything. He's, he's, he, threat, he just gets mad and he starts uh, yelling and screaming. And try, he's a kid, he's trying to get attention. He's, he doesn't know what, how to regulate. When police arrived, her son ran away. One Salt Lake City police officer fired their weapon. And I hear, get down on the ground, get down on the ground. Police said they were responding to a juvenile psych episode and had reports that Lyndon had made threats with a weapon, but haven't yet said if a weapon was recovered at the scene. Barton says he didn't have one. And I thought my son was dead, and they didn't tell me he wasn't dead, and they wouldn't let me go to the hospital for like a long, long time. Lyndon is now awake, but his recovery will be an extremely long one. Barton says she takes solace in the support from her community, but needs answers from police. Why didn't they tase him? Why didn't they shoot him with a rubber bullet? He's a small child. Why don't you just tackle him? She said, why don't you just tackle him? Another cop 
No, I'm not a cop. A cop that I know said of another police shooting incident, oh, when we do stuff like that, we just tackle them. They can tackle them. Tackle them. Put him on the ground. Now, don't e-palm throw him. Don't shoulder throw him down, you know. Don't go in for the double leg takedown. So that his head hits, take it from the side, foot sweep, get him to go up fast and get shoulder to fall down, especially if he's small, like the mother was saying, or he's smaller than a grown man, and there's more than one man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Well-trained martial artists with diverse backgrounds, okay? If you want to steal my ideas and not give me credit, which is something that America apparently just loves to do to people, I'll give this one up for the good of society, though I would prefer if you paid me to uh, teach this and, you know, and do it. But see, I don't, I don't want, I don't like this idea of they get training and then we just show them a few, you know, non-impact throws or takedowns and some restraining techniques and that and then for like a week or two and then that's it and it's over. No. Have a specially dedicated mental health de-escalation task force that apparently is going to have to be all civilians. Apparently it's got to be all civilians who hold the person, restrain the person down and then they can decide once they have the person detained they can call the police if the police are necessary, if it's necessary for this person to actually go to, into custody. Okay? And if the person pulls out a, a weapon or something like that, then unfortunately, if they actually have a weapon, you would have to call law enforcement for that. But it's going to have to be, yes, it works for the state or local government, but no, it is not part of law enforcement. They can't have that law enforcement culture, apparently. Because... Especially if you're giving people guns. If you're giving people guns, I said this one time. I know. Um, I don't know if I put this in a video. I think I put it in one of my earlier videos. This was many, many years ago when I was talking to a police officer. I won't say where. Uh, I'm just like that. I'll talk to people, and people love to talk to me. And every time I said, "So what do you do?" Every time, all I heard him say was, "I bridge to my weapon to do this. I bridge to my weapon to do that. I bridge to my weapon. If they do that, I bridge to my weapon." And I'm like, all I hear is I bridge to my weapon. What about any type of martial arts training? Oh, yeah, we had that in the academy for a couple of weeks. So I got it. It's like, no, no, no. Get some lifelong martial arts practitioners to do this. And make sure you don't pick people who think that the answer to everything is, hey, no. And at the same token, make sure you pick people who know how to deal with, hey, right? So you may think, yeah, get MMA people. Don't get MMA people who are going to start grounding and pounding the person once they get them down. So you're really going to have to examine the character of the people on your mental health, civilian mental health task force. You have to examine their character. You're going to have to do criminal background checks just like everything else. These people are going to have to be very well-trained martial artists. Okay? You're going to have to pay them well, too. Pay them. How about paying them where they can make a track after five, six, even ten years of six figures? How about that? Start them off at 50K. Coming out of college, coming out of high school, even. Don't require a college degree. Because what you really need are martial arts degrees and character. And if they got college, that's a bonus. Okay? Odds are, you know, some things tend to flow together. I would say, you know, someone's good martial arts training, good martial arts background, good character, give them interviews to make sure they're mentally sound and they're mentally able uh, Mentally stable and healthy themselves. Able, new word, healthy, stable. Have, you know, supervisor of it. 
And it's going to have to be somebody who's also a highly trained martial artist. Make sure they regularly train or t and or teach active martial artists. Okay? Give, give them time to train or have them train there. You know, it can be possible. Bottom line is you're going to need people who are good at empty hand techniques and a diverse a diverse array of empty hand techniques, okay, that can handle situations like this, that aren't going to be sport throwing or sport kicking people in the head or knocking them out with boxing combinations unnecessarily, okay, putting them in unnecessarily jo unnecessary joint locks, trying to force a joint lock, or grounding and pounding them once they get on the ground. Okay. Just, just train. Get people who are trained in Taekwondo and Judo, Karate and Jiu Jitsu. You know? Please. You can even give them a test where someone gives them moderate resistance and just and see how they handle that situation. This is completely doable. It is. It's completely doable. They have to be at least at an intermediate rank level in their martial art. Come on. Or say, say they have to have a black belt in something. Because even if they say like if they had like a striking background, I've noticed this. Once a person gets a black belt in something, even if it's a complementary discipline, it's easier for them to pick it up. Pick up where they go, the, the holes would be. Say if they came from a striking background, it would be easier for them to pick up the type of grappling they would need for the job. If they came from a grappling background, it would be easier for them to pick up how to handle striking that's coming at them. They would get it. And they would, and they would be on the job, and they would be practicing applying techniques for the job. You know, expose them to different people. Expose them to some Aikido masters, Aikido black belts who can teach them how to do disarms. How to do Aikido would be something I think would be perfect. Harmonize with the person and then put them down gently. The goal is not necessarily to hurt. Come on. If I can think of this as somebody that teaches martial arts part-time and works full-time in IT, I know other people can think of it. I'm just thinking that you just don't want to do it. You, you, you must just not want to do it and you don't care about people's lives and you probably think it's a waste of money because you think, ah, this doesn't happen often enough. It, it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen often enough. When it happens, it happens and it happens terribly. And it's worth investing in the citizens of this country to have teams like this. No, well, I should say teams like what I'm saying. Not teams like that that's going to shoot an autistic boy in the back while he's running away. He's not even fully grown. It's more of you than him. Come on, man. Come on. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people that talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. This is beyond tragic. Beyond. You are big police officers with massive amounts of resources. Come on, give me a break. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7. A special shout out to ABC7 in Utah. Peace and thank you for your time. And fair use. Fair use. Here's a little bit of a PS thought. Maybe people that used to be bouncers. That would be another pool of people to pull from. Bouncers. This is kind of like bouncing. You have your cooler, and then you have people who, you know, who aren't. A lot of bouncers have some sort of martial arts background. That'd probably be the perfect pool to pull from. People that used to be bouncers or are bouncers. You know, but just tell them, hey, you know, you can't rough them up too much. And have them handle stuff like this.
but they can't don't have them don't have somebody that's moonlighting as a bouncer that's working at night at bouncing and then coming to this during the day because they're going to be exhausted so anyway that's another idea bouncers and some bouncers are martial artists not all martial artists are bouncers not all bouncers are martial artists but there's definitely some crossover see now now you have a pre-existing discipline Right there that you could just tweak to handle mental health calls. Bouncers, consult a um, psychologist or psychiatrist. I would say consult a psychologist. The people on the team get treatment. And they can, you know, come along. They don't handle anything. They don't go hands-on. But they can be there to talk to the person. And then if things get physical, then you have your, your people there who are the arms and legs to help restrain the person. Food for thought, people. Now I'm really saying peace and thank you for your time as always. With the